Welcome back. It is time for another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted, the program where you get to help make Calhoun County a better and safer place by helping us lock up the bad guys. I'm Chris Wright, along with Calhoun County Sheriff Matthew Wade. And, and Sheriff, I'm glad to be able to say you, you don't look as tired as I know you are. You know, I'm a blessed man in the sense that the people I have working for me are professionals and uh, they do a good job and I don't have to uh, follow up behind them because I know they're going to do the right thing and they report back to me. But it has been a tiring, tiring couple of days since uh, Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, we received a call about 4.30 in the morning on Sunday morning saying that uh, there had been a home invasion and uh, two people had been killed. And, uh, you know, we talk about having violence uh, in our county. This is probably the first homicide we've had in two years in rural Calhoun County, and that's where the sheriff's office serves, unincorporated. So. It's been a couple of years since we had a homicide, and, and to have two homicides in one uh, scene is, is definitely uncommon for us. So it was an all-hands-on-deck thing. Everybody come out. We've been out. We've been working from, since 4.30 Sunday morning nonstop, and uh, we, we don't have just an investigator signed to this. We're all assigned to it, mm -hmm. and our guys have done an amazing job, and, and, and we have done a great job on investigating this. Yeah. You, you took the time to have, have a press conference, a short press conference, and, and talk about the, the nature of this crime and not all the details are out yet. And, and I'm sure you've got some details that aren't going to be released publicly yet. But, but you were talking about what it is and, and what it's not. And obviously, it's a double homicide. It's something that's being taken extremely serious that, that all your efforts are going into. But at the same time, as far as the public and their level of concern and should they be afraid somebody's going to be knocking down their door, there is some information that can give them some peace of mind, hopefully. Absolutely. You know, uh, we're not trying to cause public alarm. If we thought there was something that the public needed to know to protect themselves, we would tell them. Also, if there's something we know that can ease their mind that we can tell them, we want to do that as well. We don't feel this was a random act. This is not somebody who was just driving down the road and picked a driveway to go into and, and go in there and commit a home invasion and a murder. This is something where we feel uh, at least one of the suspects knew these people on, on a level and there might have been an issue there, a motive. You know, that's one thing that we do in law enforcement. We look at why did somebody do this? What's their motive for committing these acts? And, uh, so. so somebody sitting at home that has no connection to it can reasonably feel that this is not likely going to affect them in their home. At the same time, we do know that these people have proven that they will kill. They are dangerous individuals. Absolutely. They are desperate individuals at this point because they know you're gunning for them. So this is not somebody that the public should be approaching. Absolutely not. And you're correct on all your statements. Um, our guys are working and, we, you know, there's things that I know that I can't say because I don't want to hurt the case. Uh, but we're working hard to have a resolution and bring justice to this family that, that's had this loss. And uh, if somebody does know something, you know, we can, I can't stress enough, there's all this forensic stuff that everybody sees on TV, which is important, mm -hmm. but it's not as important as law enforcement having a good relationship with the citizens and the citizens being able to trust law enforcement and be able to give us that information. Nothing beats that relationship and how good law enforcement basically boils down to having people trust you and will talk to you. So if somebody knows something, we want them to call us. They don't have to, if they don't want to call us, they can call Crime Stoppers. And uh, Crime Stoppers is, willing to give up to a thousand dollar reward for any information at least to arrest of these people and you know please call them they don't ask you your name they just get the information give you a code if that information leads to an arrest we'll, we'll give it give you give them a check yeah i'm pretty darn sure that uh, if, if you can share some information that leads to an arrest in this case the reward's going to be very nice the reward will be very nice and that number is 256-238-1414 uh, we need your information not necessarily your name but uh, we do need your help, and uh, this is a uh, community project or a community case where we can't do it without you. So. All right, well, let's, let's talk about the information that our viewers have already shared with us over the last week. All right, two arrests. You still never let us down. Uh, there they are on the screen. It brings our count up. Look at there, to 3,999. We, I wish we'd have had three, but uh, next week, uh, Hopefully, we'll be over the 4,000 mark in, in our 13 years or so of doing this show. So, Yeah, that, that's great. It is a testament to you, the viewers, the public of Calhoun County. 
you care about your community and you're willing to do something to help make it better and, and we appreciate you doing that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the first half of this week's lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. The Ford brand has always brought you impressive style and legendary quality, and Sunny King Ford brings you the lowest price and the largest inventory, new or pre-owned. The new 2015 F-150 gets the best gas mileage of any truck without giving up its powerful towing capacity. The iconic new 2015 Mustang with its classic pony car looks and hunkered down stance preserves a legacy that defines American motoring. For over 93 years, Sunny King Ford for the best cars and best price. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved. A crackhead, drug addict, alcoholic, meth freak, a wretch like me. I once was homeless, broken, sad, just lost. But now I am sober, happy. I'm fine. Was blind, but now I see. Every day, shattered lives are restored thanks to the goods you donate to the Salvation Army. AOD Federal Credit Union. You already know their friendly staff and great loan products. So here's reason number eight to choose AOD FCU, a new all-platinum Visa credit card. Call 1-800-637-0299 or visit aodfcu.com to start earning 1% cash back on purchases. Your good credit earns you a better rate. A new Platinum Visa card. Another reason you belong at AOD Federal Credit Union. Hi, I'm Katina Houston Stroud with Family Links and this is the Family Tip of the Week. My husband and I have five kids that we share with their other parents. A few weeks out of every summer, we get alone time without any kids in the house. After about week two, hands down, the comment I hear the most is, I bet you miss the kids so much. And it's true, I do miss them. But even more than that, I feel great joy at leaving my parenting self behind. I spend the majority of my days focused on my agency, my house, my husband, and myself, and I love it. I read, I binge eat, I sit in my yard, and I sleep more than I'm able to do with kids. I could actually add another week to this alone time. Telling people this, however, sometimes gets me a few strange looks. We're supposed to want to be around our kids all the time, right? Going to work is a hardship because it takes us away from our families. The same with exercise, the same with any commitment that might distract us from our children. And if you hold yourself to the standard set by our attachment focused culture, you might end up feeling that something is wrong with you, that you don't love your kids as much as you should or that you're somehow failing at parenting, but you're not. You need to establish a relationship with your children that is right for you. Still knowing that is one thing, feeling it is another. I sometimes worry that I'm not parenting right and that I should be more nurturing and closer to my children. I know I'm not alone in how I feel, but alone in maybe expressing it. But moms, take the time you need. If my husband wants alone time, he takes it. He never feels guilty. He never questions himself as a parent. And this is why I've decided to adapt the same frame of mind in regard to my own alone time, and I feel that all mothers should. When I have time to myself, I'm more patient, I'm more loving, I'm a better parent, a better wife, and generally a calmer person when I get some downtime. And I get to see the kids growing in an independent, as independent individuals, ones who require their own recharge time and learn new things in my absence. I enjoy my kids more when I have a chance to breathe and reflect. What kind of mother would I be if I always felt stressed out and smothered? Taking time for me is a gift to them too, and we are all happier for it. For more family tips, please contact Family Links at 256-820-5911. And welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up on our lineup this week, John Cochran. Mr. Cochran, last known to be living in Alexandria. He's wanted for domestic violence, third, menacing. And meet Star Maloof. Miss Maloof, last known to be living in Piedmont. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance and possession of a forged instrument first. And this is Lisa Harbin. Miss Harbin, last known to be living in Jacksonville. She's wanted for possession of a forged instrument third. And take a look at Billy Cole, Mr. Cole, last known to be living in Piedmont. He's wanted for probation violation on possession of a controlled substance and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is Larry Jackson, Mr. Jackson, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance, possession of marijuana first, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. 
And last up for the first half of our lineup, Latrevious Jackson. Mr. Jackson, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted on a probation violation for burglary third and failure to appear for receiving stolen property third. And that's it for the first half of our lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. All right, we are back. We'll have some more bad guys for you here in just a few minutes. But uh, right now we want to look to the future a little bit because we've got some elections coming up, including one that we wouldn't normally have in Alabama. We've got a special election. Absolutely, and people might not understand that the sheriff, circuit clerk, and the probate judge are responsible for ha handling all elections except municipal elections. We don't do municipal. They do their own. But any other election, president, governor, any election down except for municipalities, we're the three that's responsible for it, but a new law was passed uh, two years ago or so, Shasta, that uh, took absentee ballots and made that part of the county commission responsible for that. So and, and Shasta Flat, our guest, is responsible for that. I think she was voluntold <laughs> that she's responsible for this. You, know. you made an important distinction uh, real quick. I want to mention this, not responsible for the municipal elections. Absentee ballots have been at the center of some legal action sure. going on with a municipal election in Anniston, but Shasta, you were not involved in that, right? No, uh, municipal elections are, they're taken care of by the cities that are, that those mm -hmm. are being held in, so. Okay. But, uh, but with the upcoming elections that we've got, including the, uh, the special election for United States Senate, that's gonna be your territory. Yes. And you are gearing up to make sure that everything goes well. And one of the first things happening, we're, we're not far from that election now. About two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Two we're or three. Closing in on it. Um, so uh, are you getting votes in yet? Is it too early for absentee ballots? No, we have been open. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, people voting absentee. I don't know if it's just from... It's, a lack of knowledge? <laughs> yeah, lack of knowledge or maybe getting uh, the advertisement out there has not been as much as been seen as your more popular elections and everything, uh, such as the presidential and all that. It's, it's been a fairly slow election well, this the, go around. I think we're still recovering from, from all of from that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there is uh, probably some, some burnout from elections right now, but uh, this is a very important election. United States Center. Yes. Senator is a very yes. important position, um, and absentee balloting, as we have seen with the municipal election locally, can make the difference. And yes. so I know we've got people that, that are watching us right now on television that are people that this is about all they, this is as close as they can get to a voting booth. They're not able to get out and vote, so they have an option, thank goodness, with absentee balloting. Yes, uh, there are several reasons that they can vote absentee, and Alabama is one of those that require a reason to vote absentee. It's not just open to anyone. Um, that is like if you have a physical disability and are not able to get to your polling place, um, if you work a 10-hour shift that coincides with the polling hours, um, then you could vote absentee. There's also those that are living outside of Calhoun County at the time of the election, such military. as military, your uh, college students, mm -hmm. and if you're assigned working outside of the county at that time, then you could vote absentee. Um, poll workers, they are allowed to vote absentee due to their poly, if they're not assigned within, you know, their polling place, mm -hmm. then that is open for them to do as well. So what's the process like? I've never done absentee. If, if I was going to need to do it this time for the first time, what would I do? Uh, you could either call our office um, and request an absentee ballot application. And it's just a simple form that you fill out of where you're registered to vote, uh, where would you like your ballot sent if it's different from your address. Um, just some small personal information, your date of birth or something, just to verify, you know, that we have the right voter information. And then you just mark your reason for voting absentee and sign it. And then once we get that, you could either get that by calling and requesting it from our office. We can mail you one. If you're not able to come in, you can come in and fill one out and vote while you're there. 
or you can go to alabamavotes.gov and you can download the form online and go ahead and fill it out and mail it in and then we'll mail your ballot out to you. And of course, the election that we've been mentioning is the, the special election for U.S. Senate, but that's not the only election coming up. Right. We have, um, it's all for the U.S. Senate and we'll have a runoff coming up in September mm -hmm. for that. And then the general election for uh, that will be in December. All right. So people can, I mean, it's probably too early to be voting for December though at this point. Right, because your, your application is only good for elections uh, that are within 45 days of each other once you fill out the application. So a new application will have to be filled out for the December, but if you fill one out for the primary coming up, it's within 45 days, so you can go ahead and mark that as well, and then we'll automatically mail you a, your ballot out for the runoff. You won't have to come back in and refill that application out. Well, we need to take a quick break, but we've got some other things that we want to discuss about this as well. So we'll be right back in just a few moments with Calhoun County's Most Wanted. AOD Federal Credit Union. You already know their friendly staff and great loan products. So here's reason number eight to choose AOD FCU, a new all-platinum Visa credit card. Call 1-800-637-0299 or visit AODFCU.com to start earning 1% cash back on purchases. Your good credit earns you a better rate. A new Platinum Visa card. Another reason you belong at AOD Federal Credit Union. I have a, my own lawn care service. One day I had some blaze that was bent. I was probably here for five minutes and they had me back on the road going. It helps me make more money uh, simply because it's, it's a more dependable machine. And side by side comparisons, people want to say they're better, but I've driven them and Toro is the best. Hey folks, come see us at Foothills Tractor. We're your one-stop shop for anything you need. Locally owned, locally operated, give you the best customer service guaranteed. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Earl Witherspoon. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon, last known to be living in Jacksonville, he's wanted for failure to appear for use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And take a look at Terry Proctor, Mr. Proctor, last known to be living in Piedmont. He's wanted for possession of a controlled substance, use and possession of drug paraphernalia, and attempting to elude. And meet Kevin Perry, Mr. Perry, last known to be living in Anniston. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of marijuana first and carrying a pistol without a permit. And take a look at Misty Smith, Miss Smith, last known to be living in Mumford. She's wanted for failure to appear on possession of marijuana second and failure to pay on possession of marijuana second. Meet Justin Maddox. Mr. Maddox, last known to be living in Gadsden, he's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And this is Chad Golden. Mr. Golden, last known to be living in Anniston, he's wanted for failure to pay on use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And last up in our lineup this week, Benjamin Clark. Mr. Clark, last known to be living in Lineville. He's wanted for failure to pay on domestic violence second assault. And that's it for the lineup this week. If you know the whereabouts of these folks, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number, 256-238-1414. All right, we've got uh, some more crime fighting for you to do our Crime Stoppers segment of the show coming up in just a few moments. But we're talking right now with Shasta Platt from the uh, Calhoun County Commission. She's in charge, the manager of the absentee ballots, and you do lots of other things as well. Yeah. You're she a busy does, person. She does it well, and that's the reason why they gave it to her. <laughs> Shasta does many things for the commission, and she helps us, and she does a great job at it. So. And, of course, the upcoming election is August 15th for the United States Senate special election. Yes. Probably going to have a, uh, a runoff after that, most likely, it seems. Um, unless one person can get over 50% of the well, vote. Well, you know, I think there's in the t I think there's uh, 10 or 12 on one side and 8 or 10 on the other. So there's, you know, the likelihood of a runoff is probably very high with that many candidates on the Democrat and Republican side. So. Mm -hmm. now, let's talk a little bit about uh, location-wise because people that have voted absentee in the past, they may have been into the office. If they go in right now, it's not going to be business as usual, is it? No, it's not. We currently have some renovations going on at the uh, Ken Joyner uh, Calhoun County Administration Building, which has kind of relocated us at the moment. Um, 
We are inside the building this time, and we're on the west end of the building when you come in. But they can ask yeah. anybody there, and they can probably point them in the right direction. Yes, that's correct. All right. So when, when you're actually doing the, uh, the absentee balloting, there are a couple of, of specifications on this. You, some of the folks that need to vote absentee need some assistance in doing that sometimes, but it needs to be the person that's voting that's submitting their ballot, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, if they're going to bring in their ballot, it has to be by the voter themselves. No one can turn in a ballot for someone. Um, and if you mail in your application, say it's a husband and wife or something, those applications have to come in separate envelopes per the state law or they will not be able to be processed. The bottom line is there's instructions and you have to really read them. You know, men like me don't like to read instructions and stuff <laughs> it in there, let's go. My wife is the one who says, you know, read this and you know, no, 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 no. So you really got to read the instructions. If not, it, 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 it could become an issue. And, and we like to think, well, husband and wife, we're a team. We, I should be able to do this for her. She should do it for me. But, you know, there are times that we're canceling each other's votes out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, and that's what you just said is what's very important. Every vote counts. I mean, it mm -hmm. matters. I mean, it's important. That's, our, that's a, the, the basis of our country. So we want to take great care with a, with a voter's vote. And uh, on absentee, we're, we, they just need to read the instructions carefully so it, it does count. So how does it go with the absentee ballots? I, I know when we're watching the election coverage after an election, we'll see that, okay, this box is reporting in, this box is reporting in. Uh, do they automatically just go ahead and count those absentee ballots at the beginning? How, how, does, how do those get counted? They actually, uh, on the day of election, there is a specific absentee uh, polling place, and that usually takes place in the probate judge's office, and she has absentee uh, poll workers assigned to that, and so we are required to take those down by noontime on election day to her office, and then she has her poll workers come in at that time to count those votes. It's a precinct un un amongst itself, so yes. at the end of the day, at the end of the night, it might say uh, provisional, and, and there might be two precincts that's not there, and one of them's provisional ballots, and the other one is absentee ballots. So all the other precincts are actually pulling places out into the community, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so that's the reason why they says, you know, there's always that one or two that's not there and it's absentees or, 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 or it's really provisionals because we do count absentees that night and it's part of the total before we leave. They, they bring in their, their uh, box just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And those absentee ballots, the deadline is actually earlier one day before the actual voting day, right? Uh, the deadline to actually file an application for absentee is five days prior to the election, and that would be on August the 10th, uh, to get your, to actually get a ballot assigned to you. Now, provided the cutoff date to postmark those is the Monday following the 14th, so those would have to be postmarked and then received by our office in person on the 14th or by mail has to be postmarked in, by the 14th and received in our office on the 15th. Now, provided the mail doesn't always work the way we <laughs> think it does, so I would really um, encourage someone to get that done as sooner than so later. So it can arrive so it can. on voting day as long as it's been postmarked previously. Yes. Uh, but you actually have to get it postmarked by the day before. Yes, that's and, correct. And if you do it that, if you wait that long, you're risking your vote not getting counted because of the postal service. That's correct. All right, so we're uh, we're about out of time. Anything else that uh, that we need to know before we get ready to vote? Uh, the only thing is to be sure that your address that's on your application matches uh, where you're actually registered to vote. That could hold up your application. Um, there's also a place on there if you're out of the county to. Put, you have to put where you're registered, but underneath that you can put where you want your actual ballot mailed to. Mm -hmm. So um, you'll get that. Uh, the only other thing, I th think we pretty much covered everything else. Right. <laughs> One of the main things is go vote. Absolutely. Your vote yes. counts. That's right. Thank you very much, Shasta. We appreciate All you right. Thanks for show. having me on. All right, good luck sure with that. the elections. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the Crime Stoppers segment of the show and our Crazy Criminal of the Week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. <laughs> 
the Ford brand has always brought you impressive style and legendary quality, and Sunny King Ford brings you the lowest price and the largest inventory, new or pre-owned. The new 2015 F-150 gets the best gas mileage of any truck without giving up its powerful towing capacity. The iconic new 2015 Mustang with its classic pony car looks and hunkered down stance preserves a legacy that defines American motoring. For over 93 years, Sunny King Ford for the best cars and best price. I have a, my own lung care service. One day I had some blaze that was bent. I was probably here for five minutes and they had me back on the road going. It helps me make more money uh, simply because it's, it's a more dependable machine. And side by side comparisons, people want to say they're better, but I've driven them and Toro is the best. Hey folks, come see us at Foothills Tractor. We're your one stop shop for anything you need. Locally owned, locally operated, give you the best customer service guaranteed. Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a crackhead, drug addict, alcoholic, meth freak, a wretch like me. I once was. Homeless. Broken. Sad. Just lost. But now I am. Sober. Happy. I'm fine. Was blind, but now I see. Every day, shattered lives are restored thanks to the goods you donate to the Salvation Army. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show where we ask you to help our investigators with these cases. First up on your caseload this week on July 16th. A John Deere DL-160 lawnmower was stolen from the 6,000 block of Highway 431 in Alexandria. And on July 15th, the residence on Mitchellville Road in Ohatchee was burglarized. They got away with an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4 along with the game and controller. And sometime on July 15th, there was an attempted burglary on Grayton Road in Ohatchee. The resident was home at the time and the suspect did not gain entry into the residence. Sometime between July 14th and July 15th, a Club Cadet Zero Turn mower and a black 6x10 utility trailer was stolen from this residence on Sky Ridge Drive in Anniston. And sometime on July 12th, the residence on Mitchellville Road in Ohatchee was burglarized. They got away with a television, jewelry, and a safe. And last up on the Crime Stoppers portion of our show between July 1st and July 11th, this residence on Alloway in Alexandria was burglarized. They got away with a washer, dryer, and television set. And that's the Crime Stoppers portion of our show. If you have any information on these cases, please give us a call at Crime Stoppers. That number 256-238-1414. Remember, we want your information and not your name. Stupid! You're so stupid! You ever have anybody, uh, Sheriff, that uh, they see you out of uniform and they don't know who you are and they say or do something that they definitely wouldn't do if you were in uniform? Yep, that, that, that happens pretty frequently. So. <laughs> that ever happened actually on Sheriff's Office property? <laughs> yes, it has. <laughs> yes, it has. We've, we've had people do things that you go, wow. Yeah, well, we had a, a case uh, this weekend where a uh, police officer was off duty, just gotten off his shift. He's back in his plain clothes and leaving the police office up in Connecticut. And in the parking lot, two men approach him and try to buy drugs from him. <laughs> First of all, I would like to think people looked at me and thought, I'm not a drug dealer. Yeah. You know, secondly, uh, you know. <laughs> he pointed them to the they needed cash, right? So he pointed them to the ATM inside the police station where they went to go get the cash while he called for backup. <laughs> I give him credit. He's cool hand Luke right there. You know, he, he kept it cool and, you know, wow. You know. Nice video evidence from the ATM. And stuff, yeah, I'm sure. yeah. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's our crazy criminal and all that we have time for this week. We'll be looking for you again next week, but hopefully not in the lineup on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.
You're watching WEAC TV 24, Oxford, Anison, Gadsden.